So let us continue our study of uh, thermodynamics. Some of the things that we have discussed uh, are uh, the first law of thermodynamics and we have looked at various processes, the uh, isothermal process, the isochoric process, adiabatic process, so on and so forth. We will now delve a little bit deeper into some of the processes. We will focus on the isothermal process to begin with and we will try to find out uh, what is the work done in an isothermal process. Before I begin this discussion, I would like to recommend to you a couple of videos that uh, you would want to see before you see this video. Uh, two videos that I will recommend is one on quasi-static process that I have done and another video is on work done in a thermodynamic process. Th that, is, that video you should look at before uh, we look at this video and that will help you understand this uh, in a much, much easier way. So let's begin. Uh, we are going to discuss the isothermal process and the work done in an isothermal process. Uh, obviously, we first need to once again uh, look at what an isothermal process is. So, just to revise, a process in which the change in pressure and volume occurs at constant temperature. That is known as an isothermal process. The temperature is remaining constant throughout the process. That means delta T equal to zero. There is no change in temperature. Now let us try to look at how is this process possible? What needs to happen for this uh, temperature remain, to remain constant? So again we will take the same example of a piston cylinder arrangement with this is the piston and this is an ideal gas in this piston. Let us say this ideal gas over here is at pressure uh, P1, volume V1 and temperature T1. And also let us say that this is surrounded by a medium or surrounded by something which is also at temperature T1 and that's how this temperature remains constant. Also let us assume that this walls of the piston, these walls of the piston, entire piston are perfectly, perfectly conducting in nature. That means whatever heat comes in contact with this, it is immediately transferred. So these are perfectly conducting walls. And let us say this pressure volume is maintained over here. Also let us assume that there are some very very small pieces of weight kept over here which maintain this volume, pressure and temperature. Now let us say I, I want to compress this gas. So what I will do is maybe I will add one more small weight over here, extremely extremely small weight. So when I add this weight, this piston will move down by an extremely extremely small distance, very small distance, say for example delta dx, extremely small distance. So when it goes down, the gas is going to get compressed and therefore the temperature will rise. The moment the temperature rises, this there will be heat generated over here and that heat will immediately go into this because the temperature is more over here, the temperature of surrounding is T1, the temperature Q will immediately, a very small Q, dq will immediately go over here because this is perfectly perfectly conducting. So there will not be much time loss or there will not be any time loss theoretically speaking for this transfer of heat to occur and therefore the temperature will remain constant throughout. There will be a very very infinitesimal second or microsecond for which the temperature will rise because this is perfectly conducting it is immediately lost to the surroundings and the temperature will remain even. As I said earlier have a look at the video on quasi-static process uh, because this this what I'm talking about right now is an example or is quasi-static quasi process where the change happens in an extremely extremely small manner. So this is how temperature would remain constant. A similar thing can be understood even for expansion of gas. Say for example I want to expand this gas so the piston needs to go up so what I'll do is I'll remove one small weight from here so maybe this weight goes out therefore again this piston will go a micro millimeter up right? and gas will expand, temperature will go down. Since this is perfectly conducting, now this temperature is less, this temperature is more. Since this is perfectly conducting, heat will go in. It's very very small amount dq will go in and again maintain the temperature to T1. And since this is this is a very very slow process, the temperature would remain constant throughout. And this would be considered as an isothermal process because the temperature has remained constant throughout. Of course it's not possible to have a perfectly isothermal process but this is a, a, the a theoretical construct to help us understand what we mean by an isothermal process. 
Let us look at a uh, uh, couple of examples of isothermal process, well-known examples, melting of ice, we know that it happens at constant temperature, similarly boiling of water happens at constant pressure, uh, constant temperature. These are some of the examples of uh, isothermal process. As I said earlier, change in pressure and volume occurs at constant temperature and this relationship between P and V for constant temperature process or isothermal process is given by Boyle's law which is PV is equal to some constant K. And if we plot, if we plot graphs of P versus V, we will get curves like this. This is say P and this is volume, we'll get curves like this for different temperature. This let us say this is temperature, let us say this is temperature T3 or T1 or whatever you call it. This is temperature T2 and let us say temperature T1. It'll, for different temperatures, constant temperatures, we'll get curves like this. And what is observed is as the temperature keeps on going up. Say, let us say T1 is greater than T2 is greater than T3. For higher temperatures, the curve moves away from the origin. And these curves are known as isotherms or isothermals. isothermals. So isothermals keep on moving away from the origin as the temperature keeps on increasing. Okay, so this is the background which I wanted to give you for uh, an isothermal process. And now we will look at work done in an isothermal process. So let's talk about that. We know that the total work done in a thermodynamic process, work done by a gas in expanding from V1 to V2 is given by W is equal to integration, the range is V1 to V2 and P dV. Now, we know that PV is equal to RT for one mole of gas and let us assume we have one mole of gas over here. Work done would be given by this. PV is equal to RT, therefore P is equal to RT upon V. I can substitute this value of P over here, so I will get work done is equal to integration of RT upon V dV V1 V2. In place of P, I have substituted RT upon V. Since R and T are constant, R is universal gas constant and temperature is constant because we are talking of an isothermal process, I can get RT out and I will get V1, V2, dV upon V. This will give me RT into log of V to the base E, V1 to V2. And this is because integration of 1 upon x dx is equal to log of x to the base e. So integration of 1 upon will be log of v to the base e. Therefore w is equal to, I'll continue from here, rt into log of v2 minus log of v1 of course to the base e is equal to rt into log of v2 upon v1 to the base e. And this is the equation that we are looking at. Work done is equal to RT into log of V2 upon V1 to the base E. A uh, few variations to this equations are, uh, if I want to the base of 10, I will get 2.306 RT log of V2 by V1 to the base 10. So from base E, I change to base 10, so I get 2.306 over here. So this is another way of putting up the same equation. So we have obtained the work done by an isothermal process, log of V2 upon V1. Of course now for, uh, we have known that P1 is constant, therefore I can write down P1, V1 is equal to P2, V2 and therefore V2 upon V1 is equal to P1 upon P2. So I can get this same equation in terms of pressure ratio also. If I don't know the volume ratios, if I know the pressure ratio, we know V2 upon V1 is equal to P1 upon P2. So I can write this equation, W is equal to 2.306 RT log to the base 10 of P1 by P2. So this is another way of writing this equation. Okay, I'll make just a final point for in this video now that we know that temperature is constant. So 
and internal energy delta u is equal to change in internal energy will be zero because temperature is constant and by first law of thermodynamics delta u is equal to q minus w so if this is zero delta u is zero zero is equal to q minus w therefore q is equal to w so in thermal in an isothermal process the work done is equal to heat given so whatever heat is given that is equal to the work done this gas is expanding that would it depend upon how much heat dq has gone inside and they would be equal so this work done which i obtained if i obtain it in terms of which i if i put values of temperature in kelvin and r in joule per mole per kelvin i'll get work done in joule and that would also be equal to the heat which has gone into the system or heat which has left the system so this is another thing which we need to keep in mind and understand for an isothermal process okay so we have looked at the isothermal process in detail just try to keep this in mind this relationship of work done and the relationship with qw uh, in the next video, we will have a similar analysis of uh, adiabatic process. Thank you.